So check this out. P Diddy. P Diddy on Biggie's car when the night Biggie oh, got I shot. They put a sticker on like the tire. I seen that and it marked which one was Biggie's. Oh. And then that's when he got assassinated. Yeah, I remember that. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Watch this clip. Puffy has been making money off of Biggie's name for longer than Biggie was alive. People keep forgetting he hadn't turned 25 yet. He was still 24 when he died. It's been over 25 years. Puffy has been making money on that boy's name longer than he lived. It supported all of that boy. Let's delve into the unsettling allegations of abuse surrounding P. Diddy. Survivors who have bravely come forward with their stories deserve to be heard and respected. Their accounts like whispered confessions in a shadowy room shed light on the darkness that lurks beneath the surface of the music industry. Cassie Ventura's story stands out prominently. Her relationship with Diddy, once seen through the glamorous lens of celebrity, is re-examined through her confessions revealing a much darker narrative. Cassie's detailed account of her time with Diddy shed lights on a relationship characterized not by mutual respect and affection, but by control and manipulation. Mr. Comp raped Mrs. Ventura in her own home after she tried to leave him, often punched, beat, kicked, and stomped on Miss Ventura, resulting in bruises, burst lips, black eyes, and bleeding, blew up a man's car after he learned that he was romantically interested in Miss Ventura, forced Miss Ventura to engage in sex acts with male sex workers while masturbating and filming the encounters, ran out of his apartment with a firearm in pursuit of a rival industry executive whom he learned was nearby, demanded that Miss Ventura to carry his firearm in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is, and introduced Miss Ventura to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse and required her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions. And do you fight back when he says up, uh, you know? I, would, I do have a slick mouth. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's okay. But yeah, no, we she talks slick a lot. She talks. We, 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 we work together well, and um, I don't know. I it, I guess the music will just have to speak for itself. People hear it. Um, I'm really excited for it because I've been working on it for a long time. Yeah, what, what she, 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 she has great instincts. There's a lot of things that people just that's all people can see. They can't like really see past that. And and I think that's what one of the things that's gonna rock people to sleep this year on her. She, she had that, that that special thing. You know, intellectual love, and it'll be coming out. Um, probably end of the year, top of the year, but we're going to make sure we set it up right. We're going to really do something. Her story encourages other people to come forward and share their experiences, contributing to a collective call for accountability and change in the industry. Another compelling chapter emerges with the story of Jane Doe. Her testimony coming forth in the wake of Ventura's confessions adds another layer of complexity to the ongoing investigation into P. Diddy's conduct. According to her account, her interactions with Diddy were marked by manipulation and fear, painting a picture of an environment where power is wielded as a weapon against the vulnerable. Diving into the topic of grooming, let's talk about the exclusive secretive parties thrown by Diddy, the kind where a secret handshake might be your only ticket in. These parties are infamous not just for their A-list guests and lavish spreads. Imagine being a newcomer to the industry, dazzled by the start-studded environment and the chance to rub shoulders with celebrities like Diddy. Names like Justin Bieber and Usher have been swirling around, saying that Diddy has allegedly groomed them. Usher was living with Diddy when he was 13, unsupervised. Usher says he saw very curious things when he lived with Diddy for a year at 13. Usher, Usher looked like he fresh off the goddamn plane. Fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the over the frosted flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented, you know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the 
all for the frosted place because he used to always get up early. Now he's one of the richest stars in the world. Yo, what the did Puff just say? Nobody's gonna acknowledge this for me. Puff just said we used to wrestle over the frosted flakes and we're streaming live. Stupid. Listen, that was stupid. Listen, having a good time. Are your usher made in the? Hey yo. I'm a thug. At the end of the day. Big white people with guns is coming with me everywhere. I'm just telling you now, I'm not going nowhere. Oh, and let's not forget that J Lo's connection. The mention of Jennifer Lopez, a prominent ex partner of Diddy, raises intriguing questions. Their past relationship, played out in the public eye, was nothing short of high profile. On December 27, 1999, Jennifer Lopez, Sean Puffy Combs, and Puffy's 19 year old rap protege, Jamal Shine Barrow, walked into Club New York, a Manhattan night spot near Times Square. Puffy and Shine allegedly got into an argument with another partier shortly before 3 a.m. Someone tossed a wad of cash at Combs as a sign of disrespect. Suddenly, all hell broke loose. Panic spread throughout the club. Jennifer got lost in the chaos. Inside, three people lay wounded. Outside, Lopez found Combs. According to police reports, the couple jumped into the backseat of his SUV. Puffy's driver and his bodyguard were in front. Officers arrived as the SUV pulled away. They ordered the driver to stop. Instead, he swerved around a patrol car and led cops on an 11-block chase. Police finally forced the SUV to pull over. Officers discovered a loaded gun on the front seat. Meanwhile, back at the club, detectives slapped the cuffs on Shine. She was severely manhandled by a particular ex of hers, and he even forced her into doing some unsavory things that she's still traumatized by to this day. She said, being thrown around and manhandled like that is not fun. I've definitely been manhandled and a couple of other unsavory things. Rough, disrespectful. I'm glad that one's behind us. Even though she didn't name drop Diddy, it doesn't take rocket science to figure out who she's talking about. And he'll call and Kim wouldn't answer, and if she was out, he would ask the babysitter, you know, do you know where she at? Well, she said she was on the beer because she had Christmas at the time. You know what I mean? So now we go on where Kim is at. And if she was with somebody, he made it very uncomfortable for that person to be there. Using the bodyguard. Now, let's talk about those raids. Picture this. Law enforcement swarming in like a pack of hungry wolves. So what did they find in those raids? Clues, evidence, or just a bunch of dusty old records? Let's see what they might have found in this clip. On a different story, what's happened to those Epstein videos? Why is Mr. Maxwell the only person in prison for human trafficking? Who else benefited from it? P. Diddy now has videotapes which have been seized by the FBI. Those will never be seen again. The system is corrupt.
As always, your thoughts and theories are welcome in the comments below. And if you like what you saw, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more detective adventures. Until next time, stay curious my friends.